Hey everybody, I'm Dave with Growing the Home Garden. Today, I'm going to answer a question that I get a lot, and it's how do you actually pot up your cuttings? And it's really not a complicated process at all. There's a few things to think about, you know, care of the exact cutting and stuff. Uh, but we're going to go through that, and we'll pot up some cuttings that I've got from Viburnum, Hydrangeas. Um, I might even have a boxwood. We'll see. But I've already done a boxwood video. If you want to go back and look at the success video on the propagation of boxwoods, I'll post a link there in the description and up here, so you can check that one out separately. Um, but anyway, we've got some viburnums, some hydrangeas that have all rooted, and here's the flat that I've got with it. You can see there are quite a few plants. Now, one thing to know when it's actually time to start rooting, what I like to do is look at the bottom of a pot. Now, you start to see roots hanging out. See, like that one right there you know it is it is time in fact that's probably past time for that one that's a viburnum that's just done very well uh, so when you start seeing a little bit of a root like a nub of a root coming out of the hole then that is probably the perfect time to go ahead and start potting up your cuttings now for your cuttings i'm going to use a combination of two things i'll probably do about a 50 50 mix of this this is just pine bark shavings soil conditioner that kind of thing it provides really good drainage it's organic and will eventually break down and then over here this is a potting mix it's got a little bit of a slow release fertilizer mixed into it it's just store-bought nothing really fancy uh, but i'm going to mix a combination probably 50 50 to pot up my cuttings in Often I will make my own soil mix, uh, but I haven't been doing that lately just because of time. Uh, and I'll use like a third mix of say compost, uh, peat, or if you want to use coconut, you can do that. Uh, and the other part would be soil conditioner. You can also add in different things like perlite and vermiculite to help create the drainage. I find that the soil conditioner helps do that drainage for me. It's organic and breaks down over time. And it's a bit cheaper and easier to find in a lot of cases. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I've just got these six inch pots here. And I'm just going to put in a good amount, probably about half and half. I'll put in a few scoops of this, a few scoops of that, and kind of mix it up as you go. I mean, if you're doing a huge batch of cuttings, probably mix them all together in a wheelbarrow or something ahead of time. So we'll do about two scoops of each, put them in. So we'll get it mostly filled up like that. Put this over here so I have a platform to use. So I'm going to pull this up here and let's start with one of these cuttings. These are an Onondaga viburnum right here. Beautiful leaf. They have a really beautiful flower too. So you want to gently kind of pry around the pot and just kind of loosen up the soil so you're not going to be messing up any of the roots or if you are it's very minimal. And we're going to take both of these cuttings out at approximately the same time. Now that we've loosened it all up, we can see what kind of roots we've got. Alright, so check those out. That's some pretty good rooting happening there on these viburnums. Now they're both kind of small right there, but they've got some buds on them at the end. A couple of buds right there. They should grow really well once we pot them up into the new pot. Uh, we're going to do each one singly. So and to do that, I'm just checking here the pot. I want the top of this, right here, top of the roots, to be just above the soil surface. And so I'm going to kind of hold that in place just like that, where I want it to go. And then I'm going to just kind of add the soil up and around it. And it's going to have plenty of room to grow more roots down into the pot. Once I get it up high enough, I'll set it in there just like this. Firm up the soil a little bit. May need to add a little bit more to it. Add some of that spill. Just like that. Now, what I'll do next is I'll water it. Once it's all good and watered, um, it will settle a little bit, so you may have to add a little bit more soil to it. And so this is all I'll do. I'll repeat the process with a lot of these other cuttings. Okay, so next, I'm going to come over here to a boxwood cutting that I think may have rooted. I'm going to check it, and we'll just see. It may not have, but we'll just check. Ah, there we go. And we do. See that? We do have a little bit of roots there. So this one is probably, I probably should have left it in here a little bit longer to allow those roots to come out. But I'm going to go ahead and pot this up since I've got this out. And I'm going to gently put it around there 
in the middle of the pot and just fill up around it while I'm holding it in place. Once it can stand on its own, I'll add enough. You're going to have to add a little bit more soil than you do have uh, pot height for sometimes. And then you firm it up to kind of push it all down. You want those roots to be tucked firmly in there, just like that. So right there, we've got another boxwood ready to go. And those boxwoods took a little longer than I normally like. They were about two and a half, maybe three months long to actually root. Some of them will root a lot quicker than that. Uh, you just never know. It depends on weather conditions, how much you're watering it, how much you're taking care of it. So there can be a lot of factors involved. Now this one over here, these are hydrangeas. They are um, hydrangea arborescence, which is um, a native type of hydrangea. You can see how well they have rooted. They've done a very good job. Hydrangeas are generally very easy to do. And again, we're going to pry these apart gently, just like that. See a nice good root ball? We've got three of them in this one little cell. We'll just kind of gently pull these two. Sometimes you have to get your fingers in there to kind of work things away. Check out those roots. And uh, these you can pretty much propagate all during the growing season till probably the last month or so of uh, fall when it starts to change temperature wise. Then the winter time you can take some hardwood cuttings and they should do just what find on the hardwood cuttings. So there we go. There's a hydrangea. Okay, so now I've got one more here that I want to pull out and put into a pot. I'm going to do all these, but for camera purposes, I'm going to just stick with three to start from. And this is that viburnum that I believe was all the way through the bottom of the container. Although it might not have been, because this one seemed to come up very easy. Check that out. Lots of great roots. There's two viburnums kind of together. Now when this happens, just kind of gently go to the root ball and kind of tease them apart a little bit. Let the stuff break out gently because you don't want to tear roots. And if you can gently move it, they'll separate very well. One big tip is make sure that you've watered your cuttings before you do any of this because that will not only help them survive transplanting a little bit easier, but it will also allow the roots to break up and come apart just that easy. So I'm going to set one of them down and I'm going to do the other one in this pot. Now I got a little bit too much soil in this pot so I'm going to tuck it in kind of create a little just a tiny little hole in here set it in gently so it's got a root ball let those roots spread out all nice and evenly and then fill the top just like that and then when we get all these planted into pots we'll go through and we'll water them all so this is a Shasta viburnum viburnum placatum tomentosum uh, gorgeous uh, double filed viburnum that blooms in the spring and it's got these uh, blossoms that just kind of go on the, both sides of each branch. Some people call it a type of snowball viburnum. I prefer to think about the snowball viburnums as the ones that kind of make the big balls rather than these which kind of make more of a lace cap type flower. But this is a really cool plant. I love these. I've got several of them potted up that we'll put on our new property when we get over there. So. Next, I'm going to go through, I'm going to transplant all these off camera because you've seen the basic process now. Uh, and then I'll show you what, how much I've got at the end. So you notice here, I'm doing these cuttings in a shady area. We've got tree cover. Uh, it's protecting the cuttings while I've got their roots exposed. So they're not getting dried out. Uh, they're going to be in good shape when they're transplanted. Another thing you need to think about with regard to drying out is winter time. Uh, you may not realize this, but when you go out there in the wintertime, your cuttings may be dry. Uh, you think about them going dormant and they don't need as much water, but sometimes they're still going to need a little bit of watering in the wintertime. So go out there and check. Make sure that they're not soggy or soaking or you know completely saturated with water. But if they're dry, give them something, okay, because they're probably going to need it. And a lot of times that can be why your cuttings do not make it to springtime, because they accidentally dried out sometime in the winter when you weren't paying attention. I've done it a lot. So I know from experience on that. And another question that I get a lot of 
is are your cuttings going to be safe outside where you live? What do you do to protect your cuttings over the winter? Do you have to put them in a greenhouse? Do you have to store them somewhere? Well, the rule of thumb is generally if they are hardy in your area, if they can survive normally growing in your area without much difficulty, without any kind of questions, your cuttings should be fine exposed outdoors. Now, if you want to give them a little extra shelter, that can improve the chances of you know, preventing anything that could go wrong. Uh, you can do that by putting it up closer to the house where it gets some residual warmth from the home. Uh, or, you know, maybe giving it a little bit of a cold frame or something like that. But they shouldn't need a huge amount of protection at all. Most of the time, I just put them out in the vegetable garden in a bed that I'm not using, and I leave them there. And they generally do just fine, because I mostly propagate stuff that is uh, very survivable in the Zone 7 area here in Tennessee where we are. So I hope that gave you a lot of good info on uh, transplanting your cuttings for the winter time. I had some pretty good success. Let's take a look at that success right now. And so here is what we've got. Ended up with three of these Annabelle hydrangeas. We've got three of the Onondaga viburnums, four of the Shasta viburnums, and we've got one boxwood right here. The other boxwoods I decided I would let them stay in this longer because that first boxwood the roots were not really as good as I would like them to be so I want to give these a little chance to go a little longer this cutting here I'm just going to remove because I can see that there's some rot happening from it and it's not going to make it uh, over here on this side of the flat I still have some camellia cuttings that are still green still growing um, there's no roots yet so we're just going to keep on waiting since they are still alive there's still hope so I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time on Growing Your Own Garden. Thanks for watching.